What's up guys, Justin here with thesketchupessentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about a few different ways we can use geometry in our model to quickly set up things like wainscoats and um, framing for glazing, that kind of thing. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so this is one of those videos that I think is like valuable, but I didn't even really know how to title it. So I wanted to talk about a few different ways that we're gonna be able to go into SketchUp and use the model's geometry to help us um, creating different architectural features and things like that. So um, first off, what, we're, what we've got here is we've got kind of like a strip mall type model, but we need to add a few different things to it. We need to add some additional details um, up above. I also want to add a brick or a stone wainscot of some sort down below with brick above, or maybe we'll do it the other way. But um, I wanted to talk about how you can use the model's geometry in order to make that easy. And so the goal with our storefront system is we want to come in here and we want to use an extension called Lattice Maker. And what Lattice Maker does is it's a free extension from TIG that you can download from the Sketchication um, plugin store. Um, so Sketchication plugin store, I'll link to it in the notes down below. But basically what it does is it allows you to offset multiple different faces by whatever width you want in order to create glass or storefront or something like this. They're, they're called lattices, but that's basically what they are is storefront systems. And so say that we wanted to come in here and we wanted to do something similar. Well, within SketchUp, what we're gonna do is instead of coming in here and drawing this manually, which you could definitely do, right? You could figure out that this is a certain length and then split this up, or you could also right click on an edge and divide it in order to divide it up and then use the line tool in order to draw in here. All valid ways of doing this, but what I like doing instead is I like using the geometry that's already in my model to split up these surfaces. So in this situation, I'm gonna select this edge right here. I'm gonna use the move tool in copy mode. I'm gonna tap the control key. Remember that that puts me in copy mode. Well, when I do that, what I can do is I can create a copy of this edge but I can use it to create the copy of the edge all the way over here. We'll remember that the move tool in copy mode has a tool where you can type a forward slash after you click to place this. So you can type in basically divided by and then the number of edges that you want in here. So notice how I'm typing in forward slash three, hitting enter, forward slash six, hitting enter. And I can do that as many times as I want as long as I don't click off of this, right? So forward slash three, that kind of thing. And so what that does is that gives me the ability to come in here and really quickly create this geometry on these surfaces like this. So, and this one's gonna be a little bit different, right? So I can do a divided by three and the spacing on that one's gonna be a little bit different. Now you could kind of mess around with the size of the opening and that kind of thing in order to make that more architecturally pleasing, depending on how worried you are about the way that that's split up. But notice how I'm just coming in here and doing the same thing. And if I have openings that are the same size, then I can come in here and I can copy all of this over. And again, I would do the same thing on the ground. I would just pick up this ground geometry right here, use the move tool in copy mode. And what I would do is I wouldn't pick up these middle pieces, but I would just move this up just like this. So I can use the geometry that's already in here um, as, basic, as basically a basis for um, my lower mullion right here. And so in this situation, I think these two openings are the same size. So we could just pick up this whole thing, right? We're gonna pick up this surface right here like this. And we're just gonna use the move tool in copy mode and we're just gonna copy all of that across like this so that I don't have to model it twice. And because that's just going over top of this raw face right here, um, then it's going to split this up. Now. You could obviously put your mullions in different locations, right? Like you could take these and you could move them up. And remember that because this is just raw geometry, as long as you're not picking up anything on the backside, it's maybe a good idea to uh, set a toggle up where you can toggle into x-ray mode, but you could adjust these depending on what you wanted to do. Well, in this situation, this one's gonna get a little bit trickier, but not too bad because you kind of go around a corner, right? So in this case, I'm probably just going to divide this across the middle right here. And again, we could adjust the size of this opening in order to make sure they're all going to be the same spacing. And so you could definitely adjust the spacing of these openings in here in order to make sure that's gonna be the same 
width. So like for example, in this situation, maybe I would use the divide function, right? Right click and divide, and I can figure out what the spacing on something like that would be. So um, say that this side is fixed, well then what I would do is I would use this piece of geometry using the move tool in copy mode, and I would create a couple copies of that like this. And in this case, our spacing is in there properly, but say that it wasn't, what we could do is we could push pull this and adjust it so that it aligned with that new opening right here. So just kind of depending on what you're going for, you could use the geometry that's in your model in order to do that as well. And in a situation like a long one right here, I base these doors based on the midpoint. Well, all that means is you can just pick up this geometry that's in here. And again, we're just gonna use the move tool in copy mode and because we've already created it, it's going to work um, pretty well right here. So we'll just copy this over. And then in here, what we could do is we could just pick up these edges. And so one thing I like about this is you can come in here and you can pick up all of these edges just by drawing a box across them like this. You wanna make sure you're not picking up any of these additional edges, but you can select all of these edges, right? Maybe not the ones at the doors, but you can pick up all of these edges and you can use the move tool in copy mode in order to copy these up. So we're just gonna type in three feet. Notice how I was able to pick up all of those just like this. Okay, and so we've got all of these ready um, for Lattice Maker, right? So you could come in here and you could start picking all of these faces up um, in order to use Lattice Maker on them. The cool thing about Lattice Maker, and I don't like how narrow this ended up, so we're gonna adjust these real quick. But the cool thing about Lattice Maker is you can use it in order to um, create all of these at once. That's kind of the power of the tool, right? And we'll just take these edges, we'll just use the move tool in copy mode. And again, notice how I'm just using the geometry in the model in order to set those up. But now we're gonna come in here, we're gonna pick these up. There may even be a faster way of picking these up, but I'm gonna go ahead and pick them up just like this real quick. And we'll go ahead and run it on just these, but if we run Lattice Maker, right, notice how I can create that storefront in here really quickly. And so one other thing I wanna highlight before we do the rest of this is sometimes you wanna come in here and you want to add like a Wayne's code or something like that, right? So instead of this being like one boring stucco material or something like that, you might put brick or stone or something to a height of, um, call it a couple feet, right? Well, in this situation, um, going in there and just like drawing that out is definitely like a valid way of doing that. Say that it was gonna be the same three feet as the um, as where that mullion is on your glazing. That's definitely gonna be a valid way of doing that if you wanna do that, but there is going to be a faster way. And so what we're gonna do with our faster way is I'm gonna go ahead and toggle into parallel projection mode, and I'm just gonna jump into a straight on view right here. Well, when I jump into a straight on view right here, because this is all raw geometry, and sometimes you might wanna group off your glass geometry, that might be something that we would do a little bit later, but because that's all raw geometry in here like this, we can just pick up all of the bottom pieces that we have inside of our model. Now, the thing with that the right now though, is if you use the move tool in copy mode and copy this up, you're also going to get a lot of um, additional lines across your glass as of right now. And so what you can do is there is a function in SketchUp that modifies your selection tool. So if you hold control and shift, like this, and then drag a right to left crossing box, basically what that's gonna do is that's gonna put you in only deselect mode, right? If you hold control, it's gonna put you in select only mode, but if you hold control and shift, what it does is it modifies it, so all it's gonna do is it's going to deselect anything that it touches. Well, notice how it's really fast for me to come in here and just remove these objects right here, like this, from that selection, using that tool, right? So just control, shift, and click and drag. Well, now what I have is I have just the edges selected in here um, for the objects where the Wayne's code is gonna be. Well, now I can use the move tool in copy mode and just copy this up, right? I'm just copying an edge in here. So I'm using the geometry in my shape like this in order to quickly generate um, that kind of like split for that Wayne's code. 
All right, so now what we've done is we've come in here and we've created the surface and we've split it up where we can apply our different materials to the bottom and the top, right? So say I was to use something like, uh, we'll go with the architectures extension. I'll go back to, I'll go back to this view right here, but we might use the architectures extension in order to add a material to this. So in this case, say we're gonna have like a stucco above, right? So I'm just gonna type in stucco see what we can get. Uh, maybe like this textured stucco right here looks pretty good. And we can adjust the color on it later. So we've imported it in, so we can just come in here and apply that stucco material real quick to our surfaces like this. But then we can also come in here and pick up our stone material and say this is gonna be some kind of a stack stone or a brick. And it doesn't really matter which one we pick up because once we have the material in here, we can just do a select by material and adjust it, right? So I can bring this in real quick and just apply that brick material. But then what I would do is if I ever wanted to replace it, I would probably just use a tool like TomTom's Material Replacer and just like swap it out inside of my model. But you can see how we've used our model geometry in order to quickly split this up so that we can start applying that material. And so one other thing about this is um, a lot of the time what you're gonna have on something like this is you're gonna have some kind of a architectural feature on the front side, right? Whatever that might be, um, it just kind of depends. So say for example, that I've got a little bit of an up feature right here. Well, again, we're gonna use our model geometry in order to generate that multiple times. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the move tool in copy mode. Notice how I'm using the geometry right here in order to create this split. Well, then I can offset it in by four inches using the offset tool. So if I draw a line right here, I can just push pull this up, it's like this, in order to do that really quickly. And so you could do that across multiple objects like this, just making sure that you're only picking up that raw geometry. But you can pick up all of these right here. You can use the move tool in copy mode in order to copy them up. So, and you could even, if you wanted to, copy them up above the surface like this. But then we're gonna have to offset these in again by the four inches. And remember that you have that in your tool memory now. So if we select this, activate the offset tool and then double click, what it's going to do is it's going to remember the last time that you offset an object. And in this case, I would take this, copy it using the rotate tool and offset it in. And then you do still have to do a little bit of drawing in here in order to get this face to show up. But you could bring these down as well and then erase that surface just like this. You know, and realistically, because these are all on the same plane, you could just draw a line across all of them like this. And then you would just push pull them down. And remember that you've got your tool memory. So you just push pull down all of these just like this. And now you've got your ups on your surface as well. And so like practically, once you start getting good at using the geometry in your model to create the shapes that you're going to create, you can get beyond kind of just like drawing a bunch of lines and dividing them and actually using, you can actually use the geometry in your model to your advantage. So leave a comment below. Let me know if you want to see more videos like this. I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you do want to learn more about how to use SketchUp, you can check out my course. I'll link to it on this page. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.